home prices expected to rise 7% this year, you may want to consider a less expensive prefab home. Welcome to the future of housing. The experts call this style prefab, but you won't find this home in a trailer park. It's trailer chic. So you can see you have a, a setup of a typical couches facing each other and in front of a fireplace. Adam Kalkin's latest prefab design is the quick house. One of the things that I wanted to do here was to see if I could fool around with sort of non-traditional materials and deliver an inexpensive house that would have a lot of style, that would be a lot of fun. Kalkin uses materials such as steel, glass, even shipping containers. This isn't your ordinary living room, but then at the quick house, nothing is normal. In fact, even the price is different. The average new home in the U.S. costs $257,000, but this house, $150,000. How does that break down? The basic kit is $76,000, but you'll have to shell out $74,000 for extras, such as site preparation, electricity, and plumbing. The kit home has been around a long time. In fact, Sears Roebuck sold homes through its catalog way back in 1908 for just $650. But today's prefab varieties can be far more elaborate and expensive. Jill Herbers is the author of Prefab Modern. Her book illustrates the latest in prefab designs. You might want a steel frame for your home. You might want a home that's partially prefab, and then from there it gets customized. There's a lot of customization in, in this movement of prefab, which is really nice. Well, I think swinging should be part of daily activity. Kalkin even has families in mind when he builds his homes, hence the swing. Yeah. Let's say this house really does have a family living here. Kids love this. <laughs> So did you like those houses? Do you find those attractive? Well, tip number one, we're going to tell you how to figure out how to get one of those. You've got to go to the websites of the architects who design them. And we're going to give you a few websites here. RocioRomera.com is one place to go. And I want to tell you a little bit about how these work. First of all, they're delivered inside of a month. That's far faster than building from scratch, which would be the alternative here. You're going to have to hire, though, a general contractor to set the house up, make sure that it's got water running and electricity. So that's going to cost you extra. But go to the web because that is the first place to go when researching these new homes. Yesterday in Smyrna, we were talking about resale value on cars. What about resale value on these? Or fixing them up or reusing? Well, you mean like a fixer-upper? Mm -hmm. Well, we want to talk a little bit about how people could stretch their mortgage dollar, even if they're not using a prefab. So one of the ideas here is to buy a fixer-upper, a house that's really had some problems. Maybe it's not attractive to a lot of uh, a lot of buyers because, you know, maybe it doesn't have that extra bathroom. Maybe it's lacking in some way. Make sure that it's structurally sound. That's the key. Okay, and I know you want to talk about getting a roommate, and I think a lot of people are going to say, oh, Jerry, come on, in college, it's okay, but I'm a grown-up now. Do I really want to do that? You know, I really think it's one of the few alternatives yeah. for people now. And, you know, lenders don't look at you different. Mm -hmm. They really do extend uh, credit to people who were just using a roommate that they're not married to or otherwise uh, related to, so that's fine. Let me tell you a couple other things you can do to stretch that mortgage dollar as well. Shop the margins, guys. You know, a lot of people, they get focused on one zip code, one neighborhood they want to right. live in. You've got to look at other neighborhoods as well. Open your mind as well as your wallet when you're shopping for a house. And finally, get some government help. If you really can't afford the down payment, and this is the problem that a lot of people have, there is a program now the Department of Housing and Urban Development has that can help you out. It's called the American Dream Down Payment Initiative. As much as 10000 or 6% of the purchase price of the home available to you if you meet income requirements. Check it out at their website, HUD.gov. Well, there's a lot of good websites, and we'll definitely be repeating those at the end of the Absolutely. show. And, of course, if you want to take another look at this story, you could always go to CNN Money, the website, and Jerry's five tips are there as well. Hey, there's a lot more to come. You're watching The Flip Side on CNN FN. We've seen prefab homes on the prairie, we've explored life under the dome, and we've seen some real cliffhangers, but our most unusual and affordable prefab palace is yet to come. Sailing in at number six on the insiders list, it's the shipping container. These rectangular shapes are a familiar sight in shipyards. But with a little imagination, the four walls of this inexpensive steel crate can be turned into something spacious and very livable. Just ask architect Adam Kalkin. 
one of the whole premises is that architecture can be a transformative experience. And that's the way, really, I would like this house to function. With lumber prices having almost doubled in the past year, the cost of building a new home can be prohibitive. Shipping containers, on the other hand, are cheap and plentiful. Actually, America has way too many of them. In fact, more than a million empty containers lie unused at the seaport storage yards along the eastern coast. And in Los Angeles, a new shipping container arrives at port every second of every day. We've got thousands and thousands and thousands stacked over here in the United States. So the question is, what's the best way to reuse these things? That question is being answered in amazing ways the world over. In London, shipping containers are being used as colorful studio space for artists and graphic designers. In Massachusetts, plans are underway for a 300-unit housing complex. But the container creation that really impressed us was Adam Calkin's Quick House, which is on display for potential buyers in New York City. Downstairs you have the living room with the fire, the kitchen and the dining room sort of all blended together. Off to the sides you have uh, the laundry room, utility room. Upstairs you have two small bedrooms for the children and you also have the master bedroom with a dressing area for the man, a dressing area for the woman and the bathroom all incorporated into a master suite. In an interior this inviting, it's easy to forget that the exterior is made from huge metal shipping containers, and you can put them together any way you like. The basic configuration is five containers. So you have three long ones on the top and two short ones on the bottom. The containers can be shipped in eight short weeks, and assembly is a snap. If you know what you're doing, you can assemble all the pieces in about four hours, so it's very quick. All in all, this quirky dwelling delivers over 2,000 square feet of living space for just $76,000, less than one half the cost of a conventional home of the same size. You can also ask about special amenities like a stainless steel Viking range package, designer wall-to-wall -wall carpet, and our favorite, the upstairs mahogany rope swing. The rest is up to you. You can make it more formal, more luxurious, can dress it up sort of kind of a chic vacation crash pad they're all different ways you can deal with it with so many features at such a low cost adam calkin's shipping container cottage just might be right for you so if you're shopping for something truly unique break away by thinking inside the box